We we'll continue now with the next keynote. I'm extremely happy to welcome Jean-Marie Borio here. Um, well, I know Jean-Marie, I think it's not so long, maybe 17 years ago, so not yeah. that few, I think 17, from some Nono conferences. Yeah. And when I was doing my PhD, starting uh, dealing with music of Luigi Nono, uh, always one of my first uh, readings was Jemai Boyle. <laughs> Any article wrote about that because I knew that I find very good information, very good comments, very good observations. And so it's someone that I really admire for many years. And Jemai Boyle studied philosophy in Torino, then did a PhD in musicology in Berlin with Karl Dallas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, another uh, strong link, uh, personal, is that Jemai, since uh, three years, is the director of the Institute of music, the Foundation Giorgio Cini in Venice, which is a marvelous place where I have also very good memories since I worked there in 2003-2004. I was collaborator there doing the admission. And so there are many reasons that I'm really happy that you are here. We finally managed that you okay came for, uh, for a presentation. And I just give you the floor for your topic. So, go ahead. Thank you, Paolo. And this, is also, this place is also marvelous. And uh, you, you put together uh, very nice group of people and uh, it's uh, a very creative atmosphere and I'm very happy to be here and to tell something about my ideas about musical time. It's more, it's not very uh, performative and embodied, it is, uh, it is mostly about the history of music theory, what uh, I will present here. This is a part uh, of uh, a longer text I cut it together a couple of times and uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to put it shorter, but uh, there are many chapters as you see. So I'm going to read uh, some pieces of it uh, and then I hope there will be still time for discussion. And uh, so I have a terrible cough sometimes in these weeks and I hope it doesn't happen now, but in case... Uh, patient, it will go away. So, it's about a uh, year, the title is a little bit uh, different, but it doesn't matter. Uh, five chapters, uh, the origins of the theory of musical time, then number two, monis and dualis, three, integral composition of time, four, the multidimensionality of temporal experience, and then uh, the fifth chapter, periodicity and form. The origins of the theory of musical time. 18th and 19th century theoreticians did not specifically focus on the concept of time. This is very clear if you look at music theory uh, from the 20th century. This is a big difference. 20th century composers speak, con speak continuously and write continuously about the time. Uh, 19th century composers and the theoreticians did not do it. You know that Hugo Riemann is, uh, and Moritz Altman are uh, exceptions, but I don't go into this. Uh, musical morphology, musicalische Formelere, that had developed in Germany in the wake of a number of notions forged by Heinrich Christoph Koch and Anton Reicher, would no doubt have been the most suitable discipline for the investigation of time. In order to analyze formal structures, one must have previously identified the syntactic units. Here there is the link that all this afternoon between uh, grammar or syntax and time that uh, all this afternoon is uh, emerging and it, it, it will play a role also in my talk. Uh, in order to analyze formal structures for formal error, one must have previously identified the syntactic units expressed in group of bugs uh, that imply an articulation of musical time based on the relations between segments with different durations and macro-metrical organized, the hypermeter. The syntactic sense given to the terms further, furthermore allows a latent principle of form theory to emerge. The close relationship between three levels First, the motivic content of a section. Second, its function in the piece. And uh, uh, third, its temporal dimensions. 
An awareness of this relationship was so deeply ingrained in the practice of tonal composition that an inquiry into its premises would have appeared to be little more than a futile digression. 19th century morphology, for Lehre, was one of the basic instruments of Schoenberg's teaching, to which he also closely adhered, uh, adhered in his own compositions. An alternative to this tradition, therefore, only became tangible after the Second World War. In particular, we see it uh, emerge in Boulez's first article, 1948, Proposition, Propositions, which appeared in the second number of the Revue Polyphonie, entitled Le Rythme. Pro, uh, proposition begins with, with a few remark, uh, remarks on Stravinsky, who, liberating himself from the conception of rhythm and meter that had characterized tonal music, tonal music, laid the foundations for a new kind of polyphony. So, in this uh, article, uh, uh, Boulez declares implicitly uh, Stravinsky as the father of uh, 20th century music. Boulez principally refers to the technique based on rhythmic cells that Olivier Messiaen had illustrated in his analysis on the right of the spring, and we know now that uh, there are many, many similarities. Procedures such as re retrogradation, permutation, and combination of segments that in the decaphonic music are reserved for pitch can also be applied to rhythmic structures. Time can therefore be organized. Is not uh, uh, the, the structure of time is not given to an external agent. It can be it can be organized with cons uh, constructive procedures independently of the other dimension of sound. Actually, Leibowitz, uh, René Leibowitz, the other uh, Boulez teacher, uh, polemized against uh, uh, Messiaen because he says he took out. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, polyphony uh, from uh, um, uh, um, rhythm from polyphony. You can't take out rhythm from polyphony. So Leibovitz here is thinking in the same way as Schoenberg, but not as Messiaen and Boulez. So we see already two different lines. Stravinsky never attempted to formulate a general theory of composition. The lectures he held at Harvard University in the winter semester of 1939-40, significantly entitled, uh, entitled Poetics of Music, Poetic Musical, uh, Poetic means in French, uh, and Individual Aesthetics, connected with your uh, uh, way of acting as an artist. So these lectures are aimed instead of at illustrating the fundamental aspect of this craftsmanship, while revealing their philosophical premises and their relations with other spheres of knowledge. One of the friends and collaborators to whom Stravinsky turned for assistance in writing this text was the Russian philosopher and musician Pierre Suchinsky, who provided important materials for the second chapter of uh, the second lecture of Stravinsky, entitled The Phenomenon of Music. Uh, one salient point of Suchinsky's uh, argumentation concerns the distinction between psychological time and ontological time. While the first is uh, uh, tied to subjective sensations such as fear, pain, and anxiety, the second is defined as the primary sen sensation, I'm quoting, primary sensation of often unconscious of real ontological time. A similar distinction between two forms of temporality also appears in Jean Paul Sartre's being and nothingness, published only a few years after Suchinsky's article. So, this is the English, but uh, I read the English, I do like in Canada, I read the English and you see the original <laughs> French. Uh, here we are then in the presence of two temporalities. The original temporality of which we are, the temporalization, and psychic temporality, which simultaneously appears as incompatible with the mode of being or our being, 
and as an intersubjective reality, the object of science, the goal of human acts. This psychic temporality, which is evidently derived from the ontological, cannot stem directly from original temporality. The latter constitutes nothing other than itself. So there is deontological uh, temporality which constitutes itself, and the other which is derived and it has to do with the world of life. Even though a direct reference to salt is not tenable, but I have to say in uh, Surchinsky's article, La notion du temps dans la musique, uh, du temps et la musique, réflexion sur la typologie de la création musicale. In this article, uh, this article begins with a motto of uh, Jean Paul Sartre, two little sentences that it took me uh, about 15 years to find out, but now with our strong uh, internet uh, uh, instruments, uh, I, uh, I got it, and of course, there are passages of La Nausée, Nausea of Jean Paul Sartre. So there is the link to Sartre. But uh, uh, not in um, uh, Lettre Elenian appeared uh, uh, a couple of years uh, after uh, Suchinsky articles, so there, there is not a direct connection. But both Suchinsky and Heidegger probably, and, uh, 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 and Sartre, uh, uh, they have a common basis, which is Heidegger's being and time. Uh, the letters, uh, the Heidegger's attempt to provide the foundations for a temporality of being that is distinct from the temporality of existence may well, in fact, have inspired the twofold natural musical time that Suchinsky illustrates with the technical categories of chronometric and chronoametric music. These are the two fundamental categories that, the categories that then Stravinsky takes for himself and uses in a, today you would say, ideological way. I don't like this word, uh, in the, I say, in a political strategy of, uh, of self-marketing and self-presentation, a totally legitimate for every composer. It is. The second type, the chrono matrix music that finds its emblematic representation in Wagner's fluctuating chromaticism and infinite melody, can be understood as, uh, Suchinsky says, a secondary registration of primary emotional impulses. So interiority, emotional impulses, secondary registration, writing music, writing this uh, temporal events. Its foremost uh, characteristic consists in the fact that the composition's centers of attraction are anticipated or postponed. Our momentary perception therefore finds itself in a situation of permanent instability projected towards a fulfillment that never materializes. On the contrary, creations that emerge from a classicist uh, mentality, such as that of Haydn and Mozart, can be understood as examples of chronometric music that tends towards a neutralization of emotional states and the organization of a normal and graduated development. In some way, if you look at it from the listener sides, uh, with Haydn and Mozart's music, the listener is always in time with uh, the performance. Suchinsky's article is first and foremost an attempt to shed light on the question of musical time, and secondly, as announced in the subtitle, uh, Reflexion sur la typologie de la, de la création musicale, um, uh, a reflection on the phenomenology of compositional procedures. So there is uh, the time of the composer composing. Uh, this is also another aspect. Even though his reasoning seems to oscillate be between the ineluctable laws of time and the innumerable possibilities of molding it in music, the crucial question seems to be whether the composer is to let himself to be dominated by time, that is, by, by his own interiority, or is, on the contrary, able to take control of it through the act of constructing sound. 
Now I'm reading in the English translation this quotation. The question involves, above, above all else, the law of necessity of time, la loi de nécessité du temps. Time is an unsurmountable reality. The process with which it flows cannot be impaired by vague psychological desires, not by illu illusions as to its apparent void or its blind elementary force. Time can, however, be organized, translated into infinite aspects and qualities such as extension, duration, warning in which the ontological sense of the alto music consists. So the ontological sense of, of composition is exactly the construction, the conscious construction of these uh, states. This vision is far removed from any conception of time as a sort of neutral container, made available by nature and filled by the composer with sonorous events, that have a more or less direct relationship with his inner being. The need to elaborate an alternative position was a fundamental stimulus for Giselle Braillet, as well as it repeatedly clear in her monumental treatise, Le Temps Musical, Essai d'une nouvelle esthétique de la musique. And this, is, uh, uh, this was published in 1949, one year later, uh, the, uh, after the, the uh, Boulez article. Here, many ideas that Subchinsky had simply sketched out are brought to full fruit. The twofold configuration of time, measure, measurable extension and lived duration, the temporal aspects of the creative process, the belief that musical time and the time of the world have one and the same origin, in addition to the aesthetic primacy of classicism and the overriding importance of Stravinsky, Stravinsky as the super classicist. One new aspect emphasized uh, uh, by Brelet consists in the need to reconcile the two antithetic terms. Lived duration does not disappear from temporal experience or music, but is recuperated, so to speak, thanks to me, uh, the mediation provided by form. Uh, Brelet says, musical time derives from the act with which the musician, constructing a sonorous form, construct, constructs its in, innermost duration. So uh, when you construct a sonorous form, you construct uh, uh, implicitly also the innermost duration. This result is not obtained by every composition, of course, uh, but only by those whose formal construction is forceful enough to de detract sound from the becoming that dominates consciousness. Brele defines these compositions as music of rational time, music uh, du temps rational. Rhythmic symmetries, cyclic harmonies, and clearly delimited formal structures, all elements that characterize Viennese classicism, succeeded in producing the first example of a rational time. However, it appears here only in an abstract form, given that the proponents of classicism used the models handed down. This is the point. They constructed time always uh, uh, keeping in mind certain models. Uh, the proponents of classicism used the models handed down from the past and did not invent new structures. This rational time acquires its full concreteness for the first time in the experience of Stravinsky's through, through the only organized musical time. <clears throat> In the years immediately following the publications of Brelet's treatise, Messiaen worked intensively on issues involving musical time in both his compositions and his theoretical writings. A considerable mass of his annotations on this subject has been posthumously published in the first volume of his Traité de Rhythme de Couleur et d'Ornithologie. This was the the project, his project of the big treaties uh, of 20, 20 musical uh, compositions, <coughs> but he, he never finished it. 
It is difficult to assign a date to the single sections that were assembled a posteriori by the editor of the treatise, Evolo Rio, according to one of the outlines of the work originally devised by, uh, by Messiani himself. However, one has every reason to suppose that the chapter entitled Time, Times, Time, that opens the first volume, brings together notes collected during a period that extends from the science courses in Esthétique et Analyse Musicale at the Paris Conservatory in 1947-48 to the master classes held at the Ferienkurse für Neue Musik in Darmstadt in 1952. These didactic activities were fundamental for many young composers of the time. In addition to Boulez, the participants included Karl Hoyerwarts, Jean Baraque, and Karl-Heinz Stockhausen. The dualism between psychological and ontological time that underlies Suchinsky's approach, and also Brelet, uh, is replaced by Messiaen with a different dualism explicitly attributed to Henri Bersin, whose two poles are defined as lived duration, durée bessue, and structured time. This reference to the philosopher is relevant because it sets the processes involved in perception in the foreground. This is an important step, a very smooth but important step. Consequently, time as duration is no longer considered to be the prerogative of a certain style, Romanticism, Wagner, uh, um, Alban Berg, or a precise moment in history, experiences such as fluctuations and changes of tempo, along with heterogeneity and elusiveness of temporal phenomena, are infused so deeply in the human consciousness that a rhythmicien, which is the term Messiaen used to define composers, Messiaen must pay the utmost, the utmost attention to them. Messiaen deprives time as duration uh, of its emotive components and transforms it into a technical category. App appealing to the theories of Armand Cuvillier, he distinguished two states in which time presents itself. That, that was Brede? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm reading this in English translation. A. Feeling of the present duration. Law. The more time is full of events, the more it seems brief to us. The more it is void of events, the longer it seems to us. B. Retrospective evaluation of past time. The more time was full of events, the longer it seems to us now. The more it was void of events, the more it seems brief to us now. It's very simple, it's dialectical. But this is the very basis of integral serialism, of the theory, of the time theory in serialism. Messiani integrates uh, uh, these two laws. Uh, uh, to laws with a for, further spe, a specific musical. Law of the relation between acta and duration. With a duration and constant, a short sound followed by a rest seems longer than a sustained sound. The science reflection of the concept of time and the treatment of rhythm represent the culmination of the debate raised in France by the works of Stravinsky that contributed to free musical time from the principle of organic development inherent to classical and romantic music. This process culminates in Messiaen with the attention given to time as duration, which is no longer abandoned to the realm of subjective sensation, in Erdigkeit, but attributed to laws, rules, that can be formulated. Experiential time uh, is this, therefore much more closely related to measurable time that had, uh, that, um, than had been previously thought. 
During the process of composition, this relationship involves materials elaborated according to proportions or numerical series that define the flow of time. There is no such thing as an opaque and shapeless receptacle in which sound events are inserted. On the contrary, defining these events always implies a configuration of temporal relations. And these uh, ideas are important for all the major pieces of surrealism, from Boulez's uh, uh, Structure, uh, Premier Livre, to Coetzville, uh, uh, Schauhausen's Coetzville, Barake Sonata for Piano, Huyevards, and uh, Fa, uh, Michel Fanou, and also for if not directly influenced by, uh, by Messiaen for Nono and Maderna in their first compositions, Monis and Wellis. In an attempt to align these conceptions of musical times, time with their underlying philosophical traditions, two contrasting perspectives emerge that I will call monistic and wellistic. The position maintained by dualists is founded on a distinction between the time of the world, which is obje objectively given and measurable, and the time of experience, which is constituted by consciousness. The uh, principle of dualism clearly emerges in Bergson's twin concepts of time durée, duration, time, and time uh, espace, spatial time. And then in Husserl and Heidegger, we have similar. Dual, uh, dualistic position. <clears throat> the monistic conception instead, whose roots lie in German idealism, place the emphasis on continuity, irreversibility, and in dynamic trust. Hegel explored the questions related to time in the first section on his philosophy of <coughs> nature, mechanics, and in the chapter on, on music in the aesthetics. It, it is uh, Amazing that the, the places where we talk about time is natural and music. Being the pure form of, of sensibility or intuition, as Kant said, here uh, Hegel is quoting in the rest of Kant, time is not caught up in the dialectics between subject and object, it's something outside the time. In principle, reality can be separated from time, but on the other hand, as becoming, reality is identical with time itself. The expression, yes, the expression, um, everything is born and perishes in time, is incorrect, because, because time itself is this becoming. Exist, exist this Werden, arising and passing away, it is the abstraction which has been the Kronos, which engenders all and destroys that to which it gives birth. So we have the centrality of Kronos eating all its creatures. We will see in a couple of minutes that Deleuze uh, opposes another figure to Kronos which is iron, but this will be later. The idea that only in clarifying the relations between events can one grasp the substance of time profoundly influenced the way in which the tonal system evolved. For a monist, every event acquires sense as the result of the preceding event in the cause, or at least the condition, of the following one. This is the position of Adorno. I have no time here to go into uh, his uh, several lectures, particularly Criterion der Neue Musik of, uh, in Darmstadt in 1957 and uh, Versus Musik and Formel in 1961, where uh, he, he, tries, he tries to make clear this position. Time and relationship is monistic position, is the only position that doesn't change uh, through the time, even when. Uh, through the help of Heinz Klaus Metzger and Pierre Boulez and, and many other comes closer to the more contemporary way of conceiving musical composition. But this idea, this monistic conception of, of time is always there. there. 
So I repeat, for a monist, every event acquires a sense as the result of the preceding event and the cause, or at least the condition of the following one. Time is conceived here as a teleological process. So time cannot be separated from uh, oriented process. That unfolds without discontinuity. Uh, yes, there are unterbrechungen, and interruptions, but these interpretation, uh, these uh, interruptions are dialectical, connected with the error of time, which is the most important thing. So the composition always, despite these interruptions, goes from a, a, a beginning to an end. <clears throat> the philosophical category of becoming, that's there then, that uh, in music theory translates as development, Entwicklung, embraces uh, both the relation between the part and the whole and the function of each single event in a totality. In every event, a dynamic potential can be detected whose adequate, uh, adequate unfolding defines a well-composed piece of music. It is not by chance it is not by chance that Adolf Bernard Marx, the first important theoretician, active in the era following the death of Beethoven, and like Hegel, professor at the University of Berlin, withheld that every musical creation based on rational principles could be reduced to the formula Ruhe bewegung Ruhe, which translates uh, your Aristotelian uh, quietus uh, and, and so on. Uh, I'm very glad that you brought this. Uh, this uh, conception of time, one of the bastions of Austro-German <coughs> Austro musical culture, was not, was not shaken in the least by the debate over, over romantic music in the early decades of the 20th century, and was eventually to be fundamental for the critique that adorned first at Stravinsky and later at integral serialism. It even found echoes in the post-war Paris, uh, as comes through per perhaps between the lines in an article by André Souris, but I will leave that unfortunately because the time is running, is running, is running, is running. Pierre Schaeffer. They are all connected. Uh, Pierre Schaeffer in Traité des Objets Musicaux in 1966 <coughs> speaks about temporal anamorphosis. The term anamorphosis, originally used in optics, designates the deformation undergone by the image of an object projected onto a curved mirror. In the field of music, Schaeffer takes it up to describe a series of changes undergone by the physical reality of sound during perception. The general agreement that duration indicates the, the overall space contained between the attack phase and its complete decay is therefore only valid from a theoretical point of view, because any concrete perception of temporal relations follows a more complex dynamics. The reversal of relations between brief and empty sounds that can be observed in the temporal experience of the present with respect to the past, noted by Messiaen, already provided some indication as to this complexity. Schaeffer takes this even further, showing the variability of temporal perception in music. Chronometric extension is only one of the components that define sound, and the act of listening always <coughs> involves a synthesis of various processes. As regards composition, this means that musical time is fixed, is fixed through an overall construction of sound, and is therefore the result of the creative process considered <coughs> as a whole. For example, a sound produced on the piano and then reproduced backwards, playing the tape in the opposite direction, will seem longer than the original. So you have here the typical example, it's like, uh, it's the same, it reminds me always of Hugo Riemann, when he struggles with his uh, two, two major four, uh, um, two major thirds, 
together because uh, physically they are consonant, uh, but uh, conceptually they are dissonant. Here is the same thing. You have exactly the same length, but for your uh, ears and your mind, they are two different lengths. Uh, uh, the sound of producer on the piano and then reproduce backwards will seem longer than the original because the retrograde version contradicts our habits and contains a greater amount of stimuli for the ear. From experiments such as this, Schaeffer deduced a principle in music, uh, a principle in music duration is a, a direct function of the density of information. And here there is a step to information theory. In music, duration is a direct function of the density of information. <coughs> so time is not uh, only the objective value of what you, you hear, but it, it's also uh, dependent on the character of, uh, of what you hear is a sustained sound, uh, um, um, multiple counterpoint and so on. So, uh, I have another 10 minutes, I'm afraid. 10 minutes, I have to cut many things. I, I try to go, I'm only on, on the beginning of chapter 3, but you just tell me when okay. yeah. <coughs> to close. And a, a truly articulated theory of musical time appeared for the first time in the realm of integral serialism. Rather than condensing into a single treatise, it ramified into as many directions as there were writers pursuing methods involving compositional technique. Electronic analysis of the physical qualities of sound and inquiries on acoustic perception are only two of the sources that alimented this theory. From this uh, scientific context, a vision of time ensured that can no longer be defined monistic or dualistic, but pluralistic. The discussion of the rhythmic cells and overlapping metric structures in Stravinsky's music had almost negligible repercussions compared to the new scientific and compositional knowledge acquired in the 50s. The dualistic conception of time can, however, be seen as the origin or even the first consolidation of many ideas that played a crucial role in serial thought. I will concentrate on five aspects. <coughs> first, in principle, it is possible to separate the dimension of time from, the other, from other aspects of composition, and this allows or even requires the, the problem to be specifically addressed. Second, the simultaneous perception of different temporal strata leads to an enriched aesthetic experience. Third, the act of listening is no longer conceived as a linear process in which one follows a logical chain of events, the, that which appeared in the immediate past might turn out to be consequence of what we are hearing now, and on the contrary, an event that appears later could be interpreted as the condition of something which has already been heard. Fourth, the quality of temporal experience cannot be entirely separated from its quantitative <coughs> aspects. Uh, fifth, time can be understood not only as a process, but also a constellation or a structure. <coughs> Uh, whose different configurations or derivation can be brought back to a primary form. The first essay that Stockhausen dedicated to the question of time, Struktur und der Zeit, Structure and uh, Experiential Time, uh, uh, develops an idea that had already been sketched uh, out by Cuvillier and Messiaen. The relation between the sensation of duration given by a segment of time and the quantity of events that it contains becomes clearer if one considers the way in which the events are materially constituted. Drawing on information theory, as Schaeffer was later to do, ten years later, Stockhausen introduced here the notions of degree of change, Veränderungsgrad, and surprise factor. 
the sudden appearance of a new event causes an acceleration of the experiential time that does not necessarily correspond to time as measured according to objective criteria and may even be opposed to it. To it. Vice versa, a periodic series of events can bring out about a deceleration of experiential time, even if the, their velocity is elevated. At first sight, these observations seem to lead to a substantial distinction between perceived duration and structured time. Stockhausen's reasoning, however, is directed towards a global perspective. It is no longer a question of choosing between a music that closely <laughs> adheres to psychological dynamics and a music based on a systematic elaboration of durations, but understanding the relations obtaining between experiential time and the structure that support a composition. So, basically, you can produce through structure every possible time feeling or time situation. These, oh, it's a little <coughs> too small, I suppose, I can, let me see if I can enlarge this. a little better, but it's always like this. It is interesting, this is uh, the second movement of uh, Weber's uh, Opus 28, three quartet, uh, in the analysis of uh, Schockhausen. This is a very famous graph uh, for uh, the, uh, the generation, and the, uh, you see our multiple pyramidic analysis, and here the articulation of time, the articulation of macro attack. So you can have small, you can see uh, the, the phases of the small time, of the macro time, uh, the phases, the duration between attacks, the, att the intervals between attacks, or you can see larger structure, and there are also interval pattern there, which are measurable. So there is a connection here very clearly uh, uh, for uh, the, the kind of chords used, so the pitch class set used, and uh, the, rela the, the relationship that they have, and the kind of um, sound form used, and the length on, uh, uh, on on larger levels. This is, I want to, let me see the next one. Um, I want to show you another example, but I need to go somewhere else. This is what he does. I don't know if you can see something. Let me enlarge it a little bit. What he does in sight mass. Uh, sight mass, uh, the, the measure of time, is the, the first composition about time. So these are all my annotations. Uh, you see the distance of attack regulated uh, uh, with uh, 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 series, one to five, a very simple one. So you rotate always uh, uh, mechanically this series and you have the major attack in, in, in small and uh, then, but this attack that doesn't tell you, it, 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 it's uh, just a very um, rudimental organization of time and then you, you go more and more in the time in, in, the, in, the, in the detail. So you have the tenuto sound here, so the sound is longer as the interval of attack, and then there are the punte, 
the point. You use the minimum word and then you have this gruppetto kind of, of sound and then you have here is spectrum. So they are time spectrum. The same idea of the timbre I projected into time and I do a complex object which has an internal time, a contrapuntal situation. So you, you can see you have another one of this, a more complex, with four voices. This is a sound, a, a, a sound which has time. The sound object has already time. So now back with another example that I, I hope we will look better. This is uh, the first page of Cantus Space. Oh, let me see. This is my transcription. So, I don't know if one can see, but I can explain you this. This is also very interesting because it's closely connected to, uh, to Schockhausen. It's closely connected to Stockhausen because they, they were friends at this period and they were uh, working together. Let me see if I get my arrow. So you have uh, events here. Uh, every, uh, every block of time is a complex event and uh, every, uh, uh, every component has a special length which is uh, given from a, a, a number, in this case five. So you have here the unit and you measure that. So you have five eights from the first one and you, you have then five uh, uh, semiquavels uh, in, in um, triplets uh, and, and so on. They are all five. But when they begin, uh, you know the components are how long they are. You know already because you have a, another kind of unit, uh, you know that uh, uh, they will, they length, uh, real length will be a little different. But question, when they begin? They will end, if they begin all together, they will end in another spot. So then he gives also the numbers that I put here from one to, uh, from one to, to four, the delay. So this is the idea. You don't hear the sound all together, this chord, but you hear like this. So I construct a micro time. I have constructed a vertical time first, then I do the next step is to construct it a micro movement in, inside the object. So then you go to the next object and so on. When it changes, uh, that's uh, typical. You listen. You listen to that. It's not true that uh, you don't listen to uh, see what happens. Uh, the structures of Syrian music. You listen in an unconscious way, the same way one listens to tonal music. You listen to this because then he applies uh, when he, he, he goes in three quarter right away. It applies the same principle to uh, linearity. So uh, the same idea of keeping the length constant for a, a, a little block and then having uh, delay. So constructing a kind of uh, uh, line which is continuous discontinuous and sometimes sometime gets thicker, uh, gets with uh, two sound and so on. So my, I'm afraid I have almost to finish here, but now how I finish when I'm in the middle of that. But you're going to section four now, is that correct? You finish section three? Yeah, yeah, I have still four and five, but I can finish here. I, I can give you only a couple of ideas of what are the next chapter. The next chapter, are about uh, Boulez and, and Deleuze, uh, I told uh, before about striated the Zoot time, and uh, Deleuze, Cornus and Ion, and then about periodicity in um, Gottfried Michel Tronic, uh, Henri Pousseur, and then Gérard Grisé. How periodicity gets, uh, uh, when you go through this idea, that constructing musical objects is constructing time, then you 
uh, reflect, you consider in a completely other way the, uh, the, uh, the question of periodicity. Because uh, this is very interesting in, 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 uh, in Pusor because he wrote in several times about uh, the, these uh, late, late also in the 70s uh, periodicity generalize. The sound is periodic. If you, any sound gives you peri periodicity. So periodicity in na nature. Every compositional uh, <coughs> in action, act that you do is changing nature. What does it mean changing nature? It means uh, to create a dialectic between periodic and aperiodic. And this is what the composer is constantly doing for them. And this is what Gerard Gizet in his writing about the times um, explains many, many times the uh, multiplicity of, of uh, musical time. There is a cosmic time, the, the time of uh, little animals, the time of man, the time of lives, and, and so on. Having this idea of having different dimensions in which you may calculate time. And also the fact that you are always giving, uh, dealing with periodicity. But since you are dealing with periodicity, you construct, uh, you never really create periodicity. You do, you create always a periodicity. And uh, working in the dialectics of periodicity and a periodicity means constructing a musical form, which is new, and this is the continuous part of, of the second part of the 20th century, to, to what, which I, I, I mentioned Griset as the last representative figure. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Thank you, John. This brings me, I, I completely agree. And this brings me to a consideration about this line. I tried not to comment upon and not to be critical about this line. It's clear that the French theory is decisive here. The, the French music theory is decisive here. You know, the derivation is, it is strange because the derivation is from Hugo Riemann. Because the and D is at the beginning of this process of reasoning about periodicity and time and so on, uh, translates in some way concepts of Hugo Riemann in, 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 in France. And then through Bergson and others, uh, they get in a completely new and very innovative uh, uh, way of thinking. And this is important, but they, need, but they need also their victims. So what they do, they use Haydn and Mozart very ideological, you would say, say today, <coughs> instrument, in an instrumental way. They deny exactly this level that uh, you, you were mentioning, John. Uh, and uh, they take classicism and something which is the absolute symmetry because uh, if you read uh, another one that I did, uh, another theoretician that I didn't mention is uh, Hans Armé. Uh, and uh, he's also, the, this, and also Boris de Schlosser, is evidently that classicism is connected with a uh, uh, very mystical and religious way of thinking. It has to do with contemplation. So they need that and then they recuperate Stravinsky to classicism. And they can construct the idea of neoclassicism, which doesn't mean anything in music. It means something in architecture, but in music it doesn't mean zero uh, anything. But they construct this, uh, making a strange bridge to a deformed, uh, from a deformed uh, picture of a Haydn and Mozart. So, uh, on, the, on the other hand, you mentioned that about the performing, and this is an important part of this picture, but there is also another part that classic composers uh, already in, in, in Mozart, you have it many times, and then you have in, in, in Beethoven, in instrumental music, that they started to, uh, and Hugo Riemann worked a lot about it, to do overlapping in hypermeters. So, bar one, strong, by bar two, uh, weak, three, middle, strong, four, weak. But uh, if you repeat this pattern, at a certain point you come to buy a bar four, but it's already one of the next one. And they do it, and Schubert does it, late Schubert does it systematically. This. So, this idea about symmetry and asymmetry, so the crippled symmetry, uh, antiliteram, and uh, the idea of, uh, of uh, creating a periodicity on the basis of a periodic pattern is also in the writing, not only in the composition. Beethoven, you have the, the bar structure and the harmonic structure, which very often ah, go yeah. completely yeah. against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are many examples, I, I don't have the score here, but many examples, All, also even early Beethoven, when you have a bar which is there. Is not an accent, not is just ta. When he does this repeated sound, yeah, yeah what is that? Strong, weak, uh, in which time we are, we are in no time there. Yeah. And this is. It's Ion. We are in Ion. Yeah. <laughs> the interference of Martin, if you just have to give a general reflection, because the paper is all over. So if you just have to give a general reflection about why time and temporality become so sort of self-aware in modernity or 20th century, you say, but you use some 19th century philosophy and so on. But just maybe why does it become a category for thought in a way that uh, it is not there before? Does it have something to do with technology, with the, uh, mechanization of time, technologies of listening, metronomes, uh, Digitalia, uh, uh, something like that, or, um, or are you just observing more passively a kind of anthropologist historian? This is too difficult, Martin. I cannot answer this uh, because uh, this maybe the the book you quoted uh, can give us uh, to make some uh, philosophy of history. 
history of philosophy of time and look why in the 20th century, after Garçon particularly, it gets really the, as one of the major topics for all philosophers and so. Uh, I'm limited to the consequences for music. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Uh, maybe a more simple question, because you mentioned Bergson a lot. Uh, I was thinking about Husserl mm -hmm. and the famous lecture of the in, in inner concept of time. Uh, in your research, because you have amazing and very in-depth research, do you find composers that are explicitly referring to Husserl, to these particular lectures? Or, uh, because it's also beginning, it's late, I think, beginning of the 20th century, is writing these lectures. They had an impact, in, I know some composers in the second half of the 20th century, but Stravinsky or Schoenberg, Think. No, uh, I mean the French, uh, uh, the first one who uh, writes uh, Revue Musicale or Musical Time, uh, an article of Musical Time is uh, Coquelin and uh, he refers to Berson. So Berson is the, the reference. Uh, so uh, that's another complicated, really yeah. complicated question. Because we have yeah, because because the guess here that Emmanuel Lunes that works explicitly about who's the concept of time and from there. It was not an easy question, Paolo. Ask me an issue of one. <laughs> the easy one. When you mentioned Bergson, you brought in relation to, to Sartre, but not <coughs> Suchinsky. Yeah. That's Suchinsky, because I saw the quotes of Suchinsky, yeah. it's the language of Bergson. It on you do it, it's exactly. He doesn't refer to Bergson. <coughs> no, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Sartre is the beginning of this Especially talk. because the language is Bergson language. Yeah. There's something I'm trying to wrap my mind around. Like you said so you call it Messian as uh, saying that the sound followed by your rest um, it seems longer than a sustained tone. And I, it, it made me think of something that, as you know, historical performers, we always cringe at the fact that modern performers, whenever they play a resolution, they play it sustained for the full value. And uh, I'm thinking of a, um, it's in, in our world, uh, Daniel Gottlob Turek called his keyboard trees, and he makes the point that it, you have to read between the lines, but he makes the point that the shorter you make the note at the end of a phrase or a section or a paragraph, the more structural importance you give it. It's almost contrary to the, the sustain, uh, the sustain value. And I, I'm intrigued by the question that was just asked about time being, getting this technological dimension at some point, because when we, when we, when we call Turk, the paradigm that Turk is operating in is very much language. It's about punctuation. It's about making clear that it's the end of the phrase or of, 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 a, of a period or, 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 or a section. Uh, so I'm trying to understand it, and I wonder whether you have any insight on this. It's, 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 it's not about uh, long in general and short in general. It's about uh, the same length. Is uh, uh, make a, a different. Uh, is making a difference about uh, the real length and the perceived length. Yeah. So if you have a context, you have five uh, semiquavers or something in a, in a given tempo, and then you have a, a rest, and then you have a five semiquavers uh, again, or you have uh, uh, the, the same length but sustained, uh, the, the impression uh, is longer where, where you have uh, less. This is the impression. So I, we don't have to, to read any more into this. No, no, I, would, I wouldn't. I would no. see it very empirical. Uh, very like an empirical psychology. So the other matter than about dissonance and consonance, <coughs> question why modern performers like to vibrate on the consonances yeah. and keep them as long as possible, it's a different discussion then. Yeah, 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 but uh, yeah, on the other hand it's connected because this is exactly the trait that uh, all these uh, composers they didn't like, particularly Nono and also Fairman, the vibration. No, why? You know, <laughs> you know, don't vibrate. <laughs> This, mostly, I don't know if you agree with me also with classical romantic and this vibration, it disturbs. Of course, I, I mean, it's already everything there. Yeah. Isn't, uh, <coughs> I don't know, but it, this is a suitable subject. Mm -hmm. 
is there um, uh, a kind of round the houses um, relationship here with theorists of film in the 20th century? I think particularly of Eisenstein, who wrote extensively about time and how it was perceived in film, and this was back a couple of decades ahead of this. Uh, and that would pertain to this, to the other question about why in the 20th century, because there wasn't film until the 20th century. So uh, I, I just wondered about the possibility that other media uh, would demand a kind of theorization uh, and therefore would be granted that theorization, and then musicians would think, ah, or theorists of music were. Absolutely. Yes, that helps us a little bit to, to come closer to Martin's question uh, uh, before the influence of, of, uh, of technology. You can see the influence of technology uh, in a later period, in the 50s, 60s, as analyzing the sound in the way it is. You, you see the sound, you can touch the sound and this thing. But you can look at it also uh, on the other way. In, in, certainly, uh, Eisenstein's montage is a key uh, category. Now, uh, yeah, I'm not too, too sure if what comes first. Uh, because uh, the, the first uh, montage artist is Stravinsky before uh, Eisenstein, but Eisenstein did it in a way which, uh, uh, yeah, but for music, uh, therefore everybody looks at Stravinsky because this is montage. But on the other hand, uh, they are more and more conscious about uh, montage and particularly uh, 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 Eisenstein spoke about horizontal and vertical montage, and that helps us, because this is exactly the situation of electronic music. So the situation that you see here in instrumental music is exactly that kind of composition that, that they did mostly in, in uh, Cologne uh, on the tape. Uh, you know, they recorded, a, a, the tape was uh, separated in two, they, they put a kind of uh, uh, blocking uh, element in the, in, in the second part of the tape. So they recorded the, 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 first, the first part, the upper part, and then they took it out, they put it here, they recorded it. So that's vertical montage. And uh, horizontal montage is the following of periodicism, periodicism, hypermeters, uh, and groups, uh, accents, uh, and all these kind of things that, that for film dramaturgy are absolutely important. But the feeling, I think, that it, it, also in the, in the whole, the film whole, that you have two levels, the sound and the image. You have two recordings in the analogical. Uh, you have two recordings, so you have the montage. You mix the sound into the image. The image is temporalized through the filmic medium. Music and sound generally is temporalized also. What happened with this double temporalization? Uh, what, create, what does this double temporalization create? It creates two, two different things, a multiple exactly like here, a development of, uh, of temporal lines, but on the other hand, a vertical temporality. And this is, yeah, we have uh, a couple of analyses of, of, uh, of pieces of movies where this is very clear, of directors who were very musical uh, aware, like Kubrick, of course, and, uh, and Tarkovsky, David Lynch. Uh, yeah. And Tarkovsky also wrote about time. It's a different than, than Eisenstein. It's, not, it's the opposite of montage to continue the plan. Yes. Which for models are important in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, more related to, to Tarkovsky. I think it's not the mystical yeah, no, no. metaphysics and so is this idea of these sounds which give something that the, the picture doesn't have without. Since Bill brought it to um, cinematic techniques in cinema or in opera, one of the musical games that can be played with time 
there's also a relationship between the, um, the time that's being enacted and the real time that that's representing. So, um, you know, obviously a film that tells a story that's supposed to take place over a few weeks, all of that is contracted, but as you come to the, um, the climax of the film, quite often it will stretch the time out so that, you know, there's two minutes left before the bomb blows up, but actually there'll be cutaways and flashbacks and all kinds of things, and those two minutes will be expanded. <coughs> and that's there's, there's creating all kinds of emotional effects. Um, I can certainly give examples from um, circa 1200, the play of Daniel, where there's Daniel's in the lion's den, just about to be eaten by the lions. We want to find out, does he live or does he die? And we we do a cutaway and we have a scene with another prophet about something else. Um, so this idea of playing with not only perception of time and real time, but presentation or performance of time, if you like. There's some of the good examples in Montevideo's dramatic works too. <coughs> I wonder, is there a way in which music does this, can do this in the absolute, not only when it's, you know, when there's visuals attached or a story attached. Yes, uh, I mean, that uh, Dara also <coughs> wrote uh, a, lot, a lot about uh, site structure and uh, one of the later articles uh, about Wagner and, uh, and uh, uh, Schoenberg, the dramatic, dramatic site. Also, the dramatic time is on very uh, different level. Uh, the, the first is, uh, is narrative, the time that you can infer from reading the libretto, or in case of Wagner, reading is uh, what he uh, conceived uh, as uh, uh, literally basis for his uh, music drama. But uh, the other is also the temporalization of uh, events. And uh, I think in uh, Parsifal, uh, for example, one sees it very, very clear because Parsifal is basically static. But your temporal, emo emotional uh, uh, reaction is very strong if you, if you can enter this uh, psychedelic uh, world of Parsifal, of course. But one time that you enter, you are constantly uh, uh, moved back and forth and all, all these things. So I would, uh, it, it, this is a very complex thing that has to do with music theater uh, after Monteverdi, uh, the, uh, the modern music theater uh, until Wagner and can be seen on, considered on many, on many different levels. And I, I think if one see like this, uh, one can infer that uh, to um, uh, instrumental music too, but what is the problem? The problem is that uh, it's more uncertain in instrumental music. So, in some way, you know, there is this emotional quality, but you don't know where you are. While in music theater, you always have a, a, an idea, even in a piece like Parsifal, where there is nothing to, to understand, basically. You know where you are in that moment. And uh, this is, uh, and what's about? And uh, this is in instrumental music in, the, in a very mediated way. But the time is central for this. Therefore, I think also the example, the Fel Felman's example are so important. Because uh, there is a specific feeling, and it has to do with content. It is not abstract music. Uh, it has to do with content, with emotion, that he conveys uh, in, in these ways that you show before in, in it, uh, musical writing. That's a very good time because that music we shall listen in one and a half hour. So I will conclude now. There is a dinner now in the first floor. You are all warmly invited. And then at, let's say, if the performance <laughs> agree, we delay the concert by 15 minutes, one hour, uh, half an hour. Is that the <laughs> I don't know. The, the concert is not very long. If, because now it's half past seven, maybe, what do you think? Let's do the concert at nine o'clock, is that feasible for the performers? Yeah. Is it too late? That's great. So you have time also to eat a bit now and then? Sorry? Time is not even finished. No, it's not very long. No, come on. I don't know, I'm just suggesting. Yeah?
So nine o'clock concert here, and now dinner first one. Goodbye. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Maybe they don't send me